Hello everybody, I'm Cathy and this is Susie and we're doing a heart to heart today on passion. So what is your passion? How is that linked to purpose? What are you willing to go all out for in your life to live in alignment with your passion? And how do you navigate your way around the blocks? Hi, Cathy. How are you? Yeah, great. Thank you. I'm pretty excited about today's topic. I mean, this is we've been talking about getting together to do these heart to hearts for a while because we're passionate about what we both love exploring and diving into and personal development and um, spiritual development and all of these things that help us grow into who we're here to be. And passion is such an integral piece to that. And so you are the queen of passion. You, you took me recently through, as a, a life coach, um, you took me through one of your tools that you use with your clients called the passion test, which I know you went off to the States and studied, didn't you? And, and uh, it's one of the main things that you teach with everyone who comes to work with you to kind of pinpoint what those key pieces are that helps them drive their life forward. So you are such an expert in this and have a, such a wealth of knowledge. So I would love to hear from you, what is your take on what passion is and how do you feel that that's linked to purpose? Wow, um, okay. So for me, passion is um, really what gets you up in the morning and what keeps you going throughout the day what motivates you in life, um, what brings the sunshine into your life, um, what makes your heart sing. I mean, I can go on and on forever, you know, with what passion is. Um, and I guess really the two are very, very closely connected in my view, passion and purpose. So um, I, I really do believe from a spiritual perspective as well that, um, your life purpose is following your passion. And there's some way that um, the universe has given us a way to navigate around um, how we live our life on this planet. And to me, it's about following your passions and following your passions actually becomes your purpose. And that's just my own personal view on it. And I can honestly say hand on heart that through do doing that myself, um, I think I'm living on purpose. And for me, living on purpose is just waking up every morning as much as I possibly can every morning and looking forward to my day and having something that I'm driven to do, finding the energy to do that, having the resilience to keep going despite any, we talked about blocks, despite any blocks that might come um, along the way. So I'd say that, that would be the link for me really. What, what are your specific things that you're most passionate about in life? Okay, what am I passionate about? I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, Cathy, that has taken a while to finally discover for myself. And I can honestly answer that what I feel most passionate about, what really makes me get up every morning and um, look towards a day of fun and enjoyment would be a gathering of people, music, dance, and food. And um, what, I, what I've discovered is that I find myself just automatically giving a lot of time to that over the last few years. And I never really kind of put the two together. And whereas I've got loads of other things to do that inverted commas, I should do, um, earn more money, um, get more clients, do all of those things that I guess really come under the category of, of work. What I do find myself doing more and more of is getting people together and really just having a social gathering whereby we're sharing food. Um, music is, is huge for me. It's a huge passion for me. Um, I discovered about nine years ago that um, I could just literally walk into a pub, put my guitar on my back 
and sing in front of a, a, a group of people that I've never met before. And by the end of the evening, <laughs> you know, pretty much they're all my friends and I get to see them possibly the week after or the week after. And and from from there, it's a whole new world for me. So I think probably that would be the th thing that drives me the most. I mean, there are many other passions that I have, but I've discovered that that probably is what I veer to most. What, why do you think you've developed this passion or how, how did it grow? Ah, okay. Um, so when I, was, when I was younger, when I was um, very young really, I remember um, my father singing and playing guitar. And uh, in my early years, uh, life wasn't particularly um, fun and games. My father suffered mental health problems and he didn't work. So we struggled a little bit um, financially. But what we did do every evening was um, my father would get his guitar out and he wrote music and uh, he would play. And that attracted a lot of other neighbors to our household. And quite organically, <laughs> um, we would just have this regular party of an evening, you know, and um, despite what was going on in our lives, we ended up just for a few hours, everybody, rather than focusing on the things that we didn't have, the difficulty that we were going through in life, for a few hours, we had that respite in music and dance and fun. And people would bring food and we would share food. And um, I think the exchange of food as well is very is a very loving thing because it's made with love. When you actually say to somebody, thank you, that was amazing. That was so tasty. That was so beautiful. And ask for the recipe, for instance, for that. You know, I think there's something really quite magical and there's a beautiful connection with that. And I guess I just continued to um, to do that in my life without realizing that it was a really important fundamental thing that gave me a lot of love and connection um, with the rest of humanity. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah, I love that. It's amazing, really, where how we how our passions develop, and when you look back, you can see these threads that that kind of link us to what we're doing now. Yeah, beautiful. I I think my um, the things that I'm most passionate about are personal growth and pers you know personal development, spiritual development, it growing into who you're here to be, and that it's uh, really understanding that it's this kind of journey that does this. It's not a straight line, and I've always really loved kind of going off on tangents and exploring, and um, you know, I, I, I that would. I've been a traveler quite a lot, you know, go, go, go to, I lived in Japan um, for a while, but when I first took off to there, I, I was quite nervous and scared, but, you know, my early background, I'd kind of had this very uh, poor sense of self-esteem and I wasn't very confident and I didn't kind of get the social connecting thing so well. Um, so I was quite scared of people because I, I always seemed to be ejected out of the social group and didn't quite know why. And so I, I was really determined to kind of become stronger. And so going traveling and I was doing teaching English as a foreign language. So I went to Japan and when I got there, I was given a card, which is an alien registration card. So I was like an alien and it was like, I could be anything I wanted to be. Nobody knew me. And I started to discover all of these parts of myself from being in situations that I'd never experienced before. And the people just gravitated towards me, other foreigners, um, cause you all, you always sort of meet because you're all in a similar boat, but also has such lovely Japanese friends there as well. So I started to develop a real passion for being together with people as well. But I'm quite introverted. So I was always kind of weaving myself in between that social connecting and time on my own and, um, and learning about who am I in relation to all of these different experiences. And I think that's the same now, really. I'm still living that. I, 
I could sort of dance around the line between introversion and extroversion because I do get a lot from being with people and um, I'm wanting to, I've always kind of been part of networks and building networks. Um, but recently I've, I've kind of got this new idea to create a network that helps or inspires other people to do these um, I'm calling it dabbling. The conscious dabbler is that I've bought this new URL and I want to create something that inspires people to play and experience new things and to discover things about themselves. And um, it could be through like the things I used to do when I was a kid was I, I did a lot of artwork and um, a lot of making stuff and sort of playing with stuff with my hands and gardening and growing things and, and um, just climbing trees and being in nature a lot um, and a lot of what I've been doing since in lockdown has been that so I sort of really revisited my childhood self and so I, I think I feel the most passionate now than I have in a long time because I've been able to indulge all these different parts of me so it's a really fascinating kind of uh, topic and then we got together based on exploring passions so yeah it's, it's really interesting uh what's kind of going to for, for me what's going to come out of this this new direction sounds really really interesting and yeah. um and and particularly um as you were talking i was sort of just thinking you know it's this beautiful um passion is so much to do with what you did when you were a child because when we were my children um we're allowed to have our passions to some extent. And perhaps as we get older, um, we're told it's that childish nature needs to mature and we can't play anymore. So it's really interesting how you connect the passion to very much what you did as a child and what you are kind of going back to do now mm. um you know as as children we're not allowed to dabble are we really you know probably very young children but as you start to get to school um do you think kathy it becomes more structured and maybe we lose the ability to follow our passions and i i like the way that you were saying that you know what you were doing was kind of following a path that went like this and and I, I, I guess maybe, you know, one of the things we were, we were asking is what are the blocks? And perhaps that's the beginning of the blocks is maybe not being allowed to go with the flow, not being allowed to dabble, not being allowed to follow what, what makes our hearts sing. Yeah, because when you think about the school um, system with having to choose topics from that very early age that, that um defines the trajectory of your life it is it's really stressful isn't it to think you, you're making such big decisions at that early time and then you're kind of a bit stuck in that path uh because they expect you to go a certain way or um and and then toe the line for that and if you are someone that typically toes the line because i think i was but then you feel something isn't right, but you're, you, you find you're further down that line than you want to be before you realize you're going in the wrong direction. Yeah. I think so I was quite lucky. Hey, uh, well, I think I was quite lucky uh, in that my parents encouraged me to do art. And so I was able to go down that route. But I think in their minds, they had like advertising, uh, you know, make a good living, um, and then the whole what you do is a, a, a through life. You know, get have a car, house, get married, kids, all the rest of it. That that was in there. That was their kind of you know model. But I ended up doing printmaking, <laughs> graphic design with printmaking. Printmaking is very unvocational, or it was for me, but it was really fun. <laughs> um, so I, I got to experience a lot of ex, kind of expression and colour and form and, all of, and the technical side of printmaking, which was quite interesting. 
but it didn't leave me in a position to get a job. <laughs> um, and then when I left uni, that there was a recession, so I was even more stuck. And I got a job in a bank, <laughs> which was just like, just to save some money before I, uh, I retrained in the TEFL and English teaching and uh, saved some money at, at, while I was at the bank and, um, and then took off to go and teach English. So I think I have managed to dodge being in that sort of strict system by going off quite early to, to, do, to go traveling. I mean, I, as you were talking, one of the things that was bubbling up inside of me, which I've been sort of really mulling over these last few weeks is, um, again, it's being aware of yourself. And one of the things that I've learned about myself is that all through my life, I have been lucky enough to be intolerant of unhappiness. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and I actually kind of thought, what a wonderful book title that would make, Intolerant of Unhappiness. And I don't know to what level people have a tolerance to unhappiness. And what you were describing, you know, is that sometimes we can go down this layer upon layer upon layer of um, duty, being duty bound and the passion goes and goes. It's very, very, and I'm going to use the word insidious. You know, it really happens um, in such a terrible way that before we know it, we're buried under. And I think from a, looking back at my life from a very, very early age, I just quite naturally, the spirit within me just had a deep intolerance of unhappiness. And I don't know what that is, Kathy. I really, really have no idea. But um, I am now, I'm grateful for it. So... A lot of it about um, passion is having the courage to follow it. Yeah. Having the courage and knowing, which is what you're saying, is before you go down too far, is recognizing that you're unhappy. Oh, I am I unhappy, full yeah. stop. I don't like this. I don't like what I'm doing. I'm unhappy. And we get persuaded by everybody to say, well, tough. Everybody else is, this is what work is about. And I was actually intolerant of that. And I used to say, well, I, I, don't, I don't care because I'm not happy. And if I'm not happy, I'm just gonna go and find happiness. But where are you gonna find happiness? I don't know, but I do know what I don't want. And I don't want this. And I think that is the courage and the strength and the um, strength of conviction to realize that I do deserve to be happy in this life, end of. Yeah. And if I'm not happy with this, if I'm not happy with this relationship, I'm not happy with this job, I'm not happy with the way I look, um, I'm not happy with the where I live, I'm not happy with my financial situation, then I'm going to get up and do something about it because I actually want this as opposed to this. Yeah. And I guess to me, that's always been a bit of a gift. Um, and when my clients come to me with pretty much everything that's unhappy because one will follow another. It's like as a knock on effect. If you're unhappy in one area of your life, um, you, generally speaking, gradually it will affect, you know, like some sort of disease, all the other areas of your life. And what I have discovered is if you just work on one area of your life, the top thing, the thing that is really causing you the deepest amount of unhappiness, if you catch it early enough, like any disease, disease, then I think there's a chance that you could turn it around more quickly. And it doesn't matter how far down you've gone or how diseased it is. My own sense and feeling is that you can always bring it back. Always yeah. bring it back. And it, it really is just about recognizing, I don't want this. Even if I don't know what I do want, I know I don't want this. And I think even identifying that, initially is a good thing and then doing something about it oh well, i think that is a really good topic for another video so definitely we, we can leave it there and um yeah. hopefully that's inspired people to actually start questioning am i really happy in all these different areas of my life what what would i prefer that would be different um where am I just following without really engaging with life or really stopping to question? Uh, and that, that in, in, 
that requires kind of taking time out, taking, uh, turning the TV off, going inward, taking time out on your own, rather than just being surrounded with people or sound or something that distracts you from what that inner voice is telling you about what you really want to do. Explore or reflect back on what did you used to love to do as a kid? Uh, where did you used to love to go? What were the happiest memories? There's so much um, juice in our paths that we've taken and the stories that, that we that kind of bring us alive or those happy moments when we reflect back on them that we that can inform what our passions are and so that we can start to just bit by bit start following them and like you say you know when you start moving towards one area of your life and then it starts to uh, change and transform and it does have this knock-on effect and so many other things change and then it's you get this energy and it sort of builds a momentum but you run into the obstacles along the way that would from the conditioning and the, all the patterns and programs that we have saying oh you should do that uh, this is who you are that's not and they are the things that trip us up so let's talk about that next time and I'm just going to leave leave you with one thing really that um would be really good to kind of discuss next time is um how many of us are living a life of quiet desperation Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> lovely okay. so thank you kathy it's been really lovely talking about this really stimulating yeah great chat susie see you next time okay bye